the minority leader, Dr. Kesey Latuforsen, in his opening remarks at the veteran of the Chief Justice nominee, Justice Getru Tokonu, made it clear that the minority would not vote on the approval of the Chief Justice nominee and so reasons behind the ruling of the Supreme Court on the Asin North MP James Jatikwesen in the dual citizenship case is made known. We are of the view that we should be given the opportunity to um, get a copy of the ruling so that we can be able to um, ask her questions based on her ruling. We are going to start the vetting, obviously, um, using the information that we have. But unfortunately, we cannot conclude on the matter until we have the ruling on um, the latest um, judgment for that she took part. So the chairman, I think it's pretty straightforward. It is open for anybody whilst we are here to ask any question. Yes. But please, let us not appear that because a judgment of a court, yes. not her judgment, the Supreme Court, yes. you have not had a copy, yes. it in any way yes. precludes the appointments committee from concluding its work. I don't think we should encourage that kind of. The Judicial Service Staff Association of Ghana, JUSAC, on Wednesday embarked on a nationwide strike over what it says is the government's delay in reviewing its salaries and related allowances due to the industrial action courts across the country were locked. Uh, speaking at the appointments committee during her vetting, the Chief Justice nominee, Justice Gertrude Tokonu, assured that the court would soon be opened due to ongoing discussions to resolve the matter. The strike that was pronounced recently, um, to the best of my knowledge, and not just briefing, but personal knowledge, matters are under control. We've had meetings with them. We are one family, and um, I believe that very soon we will see the court doors open. Mr. Uh, can, I, can I, in respect of the strike which you have just made, what is the specific issue in, um, in, on which the judicial service staff have gone on strike? It's about the review of salaries. There is a structure for the review of salaries on a biannual basis, and that, pro that process started. And staff, I think, uh, are of the opinion that it's going too slowly, and this is why they've gone on strike. But the process is very much going on, and yesterday we were in meetings. Is, has the judiciary defaulted on their part of that process? I would say not at all, because it's not a process that's limited to the judiciary. It's a process that starts with um, proposals from the judiciary, goes to the Judicial Council, goes to the executive, um, Ministry of Finance is involved, the Office of the President is involved. So it's a cycle, and then they get back to the judiciary. It's a cycle, and as I said, the process is ongoing. I think their complaint was that it was going too slowly. Justice Gertrude Tokonu also made it clear during her vetting that the issuing of contempt summons is to ensure that the apex court is not scandalized beyond boundaries. And this comes on the back of a summons that was issued to a lecturer of the University of Ghana, Dr. Pese White, for making a comment deemed as derogatory against the Supreme Court. We have close to 400 courts. Within these 400 courts, we have five levels of courts. District Courts, Circuit Courts, High Courts, Court of Appeal, and Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is just one out of these 400 courts. And the Supreme Court is the ultimate voice of authority for the entire just judicial, uh, judicial stream. Now, if the, judicial, uh, the Supreme Court is not alert and alive, to its responsibility to ensuring that the justice systems are not denigrated beyond boundaries. Those below us are likely to suffer much more than we. And I can say that this is not a recent trend. This, the 
issuing of contempt summons uh, has always been a tool that has been used by courts to ensure that the dignity of the court is not scandalized. Justice Gertrude Tokonu also denied assertions that the Supreme Court is biased when delivering rulings on political cases. She explained that the unanimous decision means that the ruling is based on law. Whenever you encounter a unanimous decision, it tells you that the law is totally on the side of the position taken by the court. Yes. That every member of the court in fidelity to their judicial oath cannot take a different position. It tells you that that is what the law is. So the only response is to learn from what the law says. So it's not a matter of bias. It's a matter of the legal position. She also advised the public to desist from giving out monies uh, to intermediaries in a bid to influence judges because most of these monies do not end up with judges. The judicial service has more than 7,000 employees. Only 400 or so are part of the judiciary. Anyone who presents themselves as able to take money on behalf of a judge gives that perception. And very often, we as judges, including those of us with the reputation of being unbribable, find ourselves in that corner where people go out and present that they are going to give you money. And others believe it because they don't know it. So they don't know that you are unbribable. So there's a whole market. We call it judicial predators. There's a whole predatory group around our function. And that is something that we constantly try to address in our study of ethics, both for judges and for staff. So there are interventions they just have to be deepened. And then the, for the community to understand, this is something I would really love to tell Ghanaians, that for every 10 people who tell you, give me money for a judge, you can be sure that nine likely is going into that person's pocket and not to a judge. So please, don't give money to people to take to judges, because it's their own market. Reporting from Parliament, my name is Ni Aikwe Okain, Fossity News.